Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk title unification match at 154 pounds between Jermel Charlo and Jason Rosario. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now one of boxing's more interesting champions. A guy who used to fight around the pocket, used to outbox you, staying in or close to the pocket, right? He beat some big names, Vanis Martirosian, Gabe Rosado. Somehow in the middle of his career, he decided to change his style. Right now, this guy was unbeaten as a boxer technician. Well, he turned himself into an ambush fighter. Someone who now jumps in the pocket with power shots. And I'm talking about Jamel Charlo. Right? The old Jamel Charlo. Again, a little bit more slow motion. Outboxes Vanis Mortarosian. The new Jamel Charlo is now episodic. He's not trying to just outbox you. He wants to hurt you. He's a true champion. He has beaten some excellent fighters dramatically. He KO'd Erickson Lubin in the first round. In the rematch of the Tony Harrison fight, he KO'd him. Right? Austin Trout went the distance, but understand Austin Trout was knocked down twice in that fight, including once early in the bout. Right? Charlo has power. Charlo now is sitting down on his punches. But let me say this. You just saw a fight between a traditional boxer, Dylan White, guy operating behind a jab, wants to break you down, wants to hit you with body shots, and an ambush fighter. Alexander Povetkin. And I thought Povetkin was masterful in that fight. But people need to realize that Povetkin's older. Povetkin's in his 40s. If you want to see a guy who is in his prime, in his prime, who when he's on his game, shows you what an ambush fighter is supposed to do. You need to look at and study Jamel Charlo. If this fight with Jason Rosario, and understand, Rosario, heavy puncher. Heavy puncher with both hands. Right? The only thing stopping me from saying he's one of the hardest punchers pound for pound is... I just haven't seen him enough. Right? I have the highlights in my favorite folder here on YouTube of his KO over J. Rock Williams, a much more multifaceted fighter, but a guy who was like Jamel Charlo used to be. Right? J. Rock wants to break you down from in the pocket. He doesn't want to jump around from outside, wait for an opening and then jump in. So let me say this. Understand the styles. When Jamel Charlo jumps in, you'll notice that he has his defense already prepared. In other words, he'll jump in, he'll have a hand up here. The ambush is set up so that if you hit him on the way in, there's a chance he, he can block the shot. This is as he's jumping in. 
to throw the left hand. You'll also notice too that he doesn't stand upright. He leans. So, you can't find his body. You'll notice he has great legs. You can't find him. He's not in the pocket. When he enters, his defense is ready and he's throwing punches. Let me say this too. I believe the combinations are pre-programmed. Right? So he comes in on Erickson Lubin. He throws a punch. Lubin ducks under it. Right? Lubin is prepared. By the way, Lubin, an elite talent, in my opinion. Lubin's prepared. Lubin ducks the punch. But then Charlo has the other punch already cued. It's like a computer program that says, okay, we have half a second to jump in this doorway. And when we do, we're going to proceed according to this progression. So, of course, Charlo follows through with the right hand that I believe he already had programmed. He's not reading Lubin. Just like I don't believe Pavetkin was reading Dylan White. No, they're not reading, they're leading. Right? They read you up until the start of the ambush. Then they come in with a programmed attack. So he hits Lubin flush, and Lubin's out. Understand, ambush fighters, right, guys who are episodic, they're just coming in for moments in the round. And when they come in, they're coming in with heavy shots. Right? Heavy shots. Then they're going to get back out. Right? You have to have the legs to move around the ring. In other words, heavy-footed guys, George Foreman, wouldn't be able to do an ambush style. Right? This is the opposite of Deontay Wilder's style, where Wilder is daring you to do something. He's flat-footed. Then when you move, he throws a straight right hand. Now, this is different. This is a guy jumping around the ring, right, with a lean as he jumps. You want to see how to hide your body? Look at Jamel Charlo films. He has a lean as he jumps, right? He's too far away from you a lot of the time for you to throw punches on him. Then when he comes in, he'll come in like this so you can't hit him. Or if you try to hit him, he has it blocked. And he has a trick or treat behind it. Then if he throws this punch and you dodge the punch, he's already prepared to go low and throw the next shot. And he's not going to stick around for you to get acclimated to the punch pattern. He's going to move back out. Now by contrast... Jason Rosario is more like Dylan White without the jab with a heavier punch. Rosario is a hook and uppercut artist. That's his game. Hooks and uppercuts. He has a jab that he touches you with a little bit but he doesn't believe in it enough to throw it a lot. His real game is to be passive defensively. This is the opposite of Charlo. Right? Charlo is jumping in, has a hand up already, as he's moving to attack you. Rosario is not trying to attack you on defense. When you throw on him, he's there to just block the shots and wait for you to stop throwing. The one fight he lost, I have the film in my favorites folder here on YouTube, to Nathan Gallimore. You're going to notice that in the first half of the first round, Rosario is just standing there. Right? Gallimore's fast. Rosario's just soaking in Gallimore's speed, but he's not 
trying to engage Gallimore. He's just trying to block the shots. When Gallimore throws, Rosario is just taking the shots. Right? He's, he's just all defended up. He can't use Gallimore's offense against him. This is the opposite of Charlo. Right? Whereas a guy trying to get offensive on Charlo is going to have Charlo move laterally. Pick an entry point. And when Charlo thinks he can do damage, jump in. Right? With power shots. Rosario is different. Rosario stands there and lets Gallimore hit him. Then when there's a lull in the action and Gallimore backs away, Rosario chases after him. Right? Rosario is not an ambush fighter. An ambush fighter jumps in, beats you up, then leaves. Resets. Is just interested in episodes. Each episode is an opportunity for them to throw some heavy hook on you. You'll notice if Jamel Charlo jumps in and gets his shots blocked, he'll jump back out. He'll reset. Time for the next episode. Jason Rosario, by contrast, toward the end of the first round of the Gallimore fight, as Gallimore gets a little bit tired from hitting Rosario, and Rosario looks slow. And keep in mind, he's hiding his hands. In other words, he's not really throwing a lot to show you his punch pattern. As Gallimore then backs away, you'll notice Rosario suddenly has a burst of energy. He has foot speed. But you have to stop punching to see it. So then he backs up. Gallimore, and he's not there to visit the pocket. He's there to stay in the pocket. So he's throwing heavy hooks. When Gallimore starts to block some of the shots up top, he's going to the body. His game plan is to wait for you to stop throwing punches and then to come in the pocket, follow you after the interaction, and stay there wilt you. You'll notice in the J-Rock fight, he hurts J-Rock, he's not going to let J-Rock off the hook. Right? He's just throwing punches after that. Well, let me just say this. In the Gallimore fight, he ultimately gets caught because he gets reckless. The things that an ambush fighter strives to avoid by making the ambush one of limited duration, right? Think about those movies of bank robbers who go in the bank and then somebody is looking at their watch. They know that they need to get out of that bank in 60 seconds, right? So their co-conspirator is talking to the cashier, hands them a note, gets the bag of cash, they're out the door because they understand after 60 seconds, someone's going to hit the alarm, the cops will be alerted, their chances of being caught are much greater. Well, let's move that to boxing. Instead of 60 seconds, an ambush fighter was thinking more like three seconds. Right? They jump in, boom, boom, boom. In other words, Jamel Charlo figures out from the outside, right? Here's an opening. I believe he's a hardcore studier of fight film. Before the fight, they know, okay, this guy in this position, if I catch him on his back foot, is going to be open to a left hook up top, right? I'm going to jump in, throw the left hook up top. If he moves to the right as he does on film, I'm going to throw the right hand down low. Right? If this guy is able to parry me or somehow deflect my attack, then I'm going to get back out. So understand, 
the way to beat Jamel Charlo, we've seen it on film, is with a Tony Harrison type of jab. Whether or not you think Harrison won that first Charlo fight, let's be clear, he did a lot better than 95% of Charlo's opponents. Right? Tony makes it to the end of the fight. Tony tags Charlo a lot. You have to have the kind of timing and jab or other punch to hit Charlo as he enters the pocket to start the ambush. Right? Either you get ambush fighters at the beginning of the ambush. And that's hard because these guys are rehearsed. Right? You don't know when Pervetkin's going to jump in the pocket. You don't know when Jamel Charlo's going to jump in the pocket. Right? Harrison had the timing where time and time again, Jamel Charlo would jump in the pocket and Harrison, who has length, would hit him with a jab. When Charlo was outside resetting, Harrison went out there to find him with the jab. Now, Rosario doesn't have doesn't have that level of jab but what he does have is the ability in the middle of a storm right on a not a clear day but on a rainy day in the middle of uncertainty in the ring he's willing to stand there 